watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hello and welcome to ShopRite's Be the Media program. My name is Chuck Joseph and my family owns the ShopRite of West Hartford. In this segment, you'll see local stories about our community as told by local residents of all ages. As a resident and business owner in West Hartford, our ShopRite team is proud to support Be the Media. My family opened our store with the mission to have a positive impact on the community, and we are pleased to share that mission with you today. Thanks for watching, and enjoy the show. Welcome to the 32nd Annual Greater Hartford Senior Golf Tournament. We are thrilled to be here at beautiful Rockledge. We have 90 golfers coming today. Uh, they started teeing off already early this morning and they're in for a fun day. We have many generous sponsors and participants and volunteers, staff members here who help us to make this a wonderful event and Rockledge is always super duper to us. Um, it's an opportunity for our seniors to play golf on one of the most beautiful go golf courses in the state of Connecticut. Rockledge is infamous for its beauty and the staff here are phenomenal and Rich Crow, the pro, bends over backwards for all of us. So it's a great opportunity for our seniors to play on a be really beautiful course. I just play now, I used to be more competitive, but now I play because it's fun to play and I like the people I play with. Throughout, the community has been a tremendous supporter of this tournament for again 32 years and we're just very happy to be here with all of the seniors. Some of them have come back year after year after year and, and just make it a wonderful success. It is a fundraiser for the Senior Center in Bishop's Corner. We do many, many activities, whether they're educational, whether they are 
um, entertainment-wise, um, health-wise, and so we have an active community. And our tagline is actually, stay active with us. So for those golfers who golf and people who are volunteering here today, they're staying active with us, which we love. That's so thank you. <laughs>so what brings you down here today just the parade granddaughter's marching in the parade are you marching in the parade no it's my twin you're a twin you have a twin sister yes um she plays the flute okay is that why she's in the parade for the flute yes oh my god that's exciting is it for like a marching band like with her school yeah actually it's bristow middle school and it's the best school right now best school <laughs> absolutely <laughs>
So we are in an exhibition called Hanga Now, Contemporary Japanese Printmakers. Uh, this is, I would say, the fourth exhibition of Japanese prints we've done at this museum. Uh, our previous exhibitions have been in the 19th century and early 20th century prints, so it seemed like a natural thing to uh, focus on contemporary works. Uh, <clears throat> So we're very excited um, to have all these wonderful pieces here. We've borrowed from private collectors and some contemporary print dealers, um, other institutions, and have quite a variety. Um, one of the characteristics of contemporary Japanese prints is that they uh, are in a variety of media. So when you think of 19th century prints um, from Japan, you think of the wonderful woodblock prints of Hiroshige or Hokusai. Um, but these artists, um, having been uh, widely traveled, exposed to a lot of Western art as well, uh, I have adopted etching, engraving, mezzotint, all sorts of, uh, of print techniques, which they often combine in a single work. So they're very much uh, a part of contemporary, global contemporary art and uh, are doing extremely interesting work. So we're very happy to have this show here. On Monday, September 19th, the American Red Cross held a blood drive at the town hall. We spoke with friendly nurses and volunteers, but we didn't see many donors. The entire day was booked with appointments, but only half of the donors showed up. There are not many people here today. We were being told earlier that um, you need an appointment, so you made an appointment? Yes. And yes, how did you do that? I did it online, and it's very simple. Uh, they have told me that if a lot of people from there make people wait for the night appointment. So if you come here, you certainly have to sit for the Some of the volunteers weighed in on why they think it's important to give blood. Well, as we've noted, uh, unfortunately, there's been many disasters. And the uh, first thing whenever there's uh, trauma uh, is that people are injured. And uh, blood is the one ingredient that we all need. And so it's important that uh, we do as much as we can to keep our blood banks full. So when you, God forbid, there's another tragic event, uh, we'll be prepared and be able to help those victims. Well, the truth is, we never know when we're going to need it, but when people need it, it's so important that we have to keep the supply up. Sign up to donate blood at the next blood drive on October 27th at the West Hartford Town Hall. Make sure to make an appointment at redcrossblood.org. Bluebeck Square got a pink makeover on October 6th as the 5th annual Pink Party kicked off Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Hundreds of people, including breast cancer survivors, came out to support the cause and raise money. There was a raffle where 100% of the proceeds go to benefiting Coleman Southern New England. The event included dance performances, live music, fashion show where breast cancer survivors don clothing donated from local West Hartford shops. WHCTV caught up with some of the vendors, coordinators, and survivors who shared why they thought it was important to support this event. I am representing Gail Toyota at the Pink Party. 
Uh, we've had cancer in our family, in our dealership. Uh, we've had co-workers, so we have come here. This is the second year for us here at the Pink Party, and we like to come down here and show our support for the community. Um, the car is um, something that we like to do because we like to see how excited people get to be able to write a little something on the car, a little I love you to their loved ones, or just uh, I've been fighting for 15 years and it feels really good, and yay for me, you know, and so they put it on the car and it makes them feel good. Even if it's just for a few seconds, it's worth it to us to bring the car down and let people sign it. And it looks like the community here in West Hartford comes out and they enjoy it, so uh, I think we should keep doing it. We'll be here next year. Yeah. I just thought it would be good to get out with the community, you know, give back and hopefully help for what we can do. That was our goal. Hopefully bring business to Bubak Square. I'm the publisher and editor-in-chief of the Hartford Current Media Group. And we're one of the organizers of this event. We're very proud to be part of this. This is an awesome event that brings together all sorts of organizations and people from across Hartford. And I think you can just see by how many people have come here today, how many people are touched by breast cancer. I think, I think when you see the people standing up there on the stage celebrating, you realize that this is an opportunity to celebrate life and not fear the disease. And that's a really important thing when you're battling illnesses like cancer. This is an opportunity for a community to come together and say we celebrate. And it's so important to have that community support. Um, people go through these uh, terrible moments in their lives and sometimes they feel like they're alone. When you have an event like this, when West Hartford comes together as a community, people don't feel like they're alone anymore. I'm here because I'm a two-year survivor of breast cancer. And this is my best friend, Kimberly. Of over 35 years. 35 years we've been friends. And she had breast cancer and I watched her go through everything. And Almost I said- I, six years survivor. And I said, I could never go April. through what you were going through. And I end up with breast cancer. See that? But she did it. I did. She was afraid, but she got courageous. Because that was the only option was to fight, right? So and that's what we did. So we're here celebrating survival and here to support everyone that didn't survive and that will go through it eventually or soon or is going through it now. So we just want to pink And out. we're here for support of yes. everyone. We heard about it like a few years ago and this year was the first time I said, you know what, let's go. So we'll be here every year after this. So we're looking forward to it. It was wonderful, it was inspirational, it was uplifting, it was great. So we're definitely going to do it again. It's, uh, it's our 18th year, and uh, in two in in all of the 18 years, only twice has it been canceled due to weather. Last year was one of them, and we were really hoping that this year would not be the third one. But we're gonna have we're gonna see a lot of great things today. You'll see clowns, you'll see bands, you'll see hearty souls that are coming out to uh, just celebrate everything that's great in Lester. Well, you know, I've been doing this for 19 years since the parade first started, and we've had a couple of close calls, and we've always managed to pull it off, so we're thankful. We're praying and looking up there ahead, and it's just such a great opportunity to have everybody come together, and a lot of fun to be part of it. Had it rain or shine. Right. <laughs> you know, us guys over here live over in the center of town, we're tough, so we, uh, we don't worry about it. <laughs> It's a, it's a fun parade. It's always been a fun parade. I've been every once since the inception, and uh, we uh, we have a good time with it. And we'll be fine. We've got, as you can see, we've got our tent here. Yeah. We're gonna <coughs> sell our Boy Scout uh, popcorn. We're not quite as fancy as we've been in the past because of the weather, but uh, that's what we're. That's what we're. Uh, you know, if, if it stays like this, it should be fine. a little chilly, but it, it, it should be fine. But uh, 
uh, hopefully if there's going to be any big rain today, it'll it'll hold off till after we're gone. It takes months. It's months in the in the making for sure. We s- start in May. Um, one of our first fundraisers is the celebrity breakfast that's held on the second Tuesday in June, and so we we raise a, a good amount of money to help offset the cost of the bands that we hired to be in this parade today. And uh, and then from there we put out the call for everyone to be in this parade, and uh, and you know and then we organize them into different places in September, and then it brings us to here today, October first. On October 6th and 7th from 11 to 2.30, the kids' store, Toy Chest, located in West Hartford Center, held a silhouette drawing event. The silhouette artist was Keith Donaldson from Florida. I started this in 2003 at Disney World, Magic Kingdom. Um, I was always good at drawing before that, and then Disney hired me based upon my drawings, my profile drawings, and I've been cutting ever since, freelancing at Disney, but mostly traveling to children's events like this now. I've always had a passion for people and drawing and, and being able to capture a likeness has always been like the most interesting thing to me. Um, and, and the fact that uh, I can use scissors to do it, it's more like a sculpting art. And I really get a nice sharp contrast, you know, with the black paper versus just sketching, you know. So I think to me this is the most quickest way to capture likeness and it's also the most strongest um, likeness you can get because you're actually capturing the shadow and the mind is actually filling in all the details for you. Whereas, you know, if you draw somebody, you have to add color, you have to add texture. Um, by the time you do all those things, you know, they actually may take away from the likeness more than if you just had a nice strong um, profile, which really defines the personality, I think. I actually, uh, believe it or not, I made most artistic all throughout middle school and, and grade school. But then I got to high school, I was so good at drawing because the teachers actually would allow me to draw all the time, okay, that I never was able to um, focus on the other crafts. So I almost got lost interest in art when I was in high school. But then later on, I wanted to draw comic books. So I studied almost every book I could on anatomy and figure drawing. You know, it took me months, I think, to really perfect it. Um, but uh, after like a couple weeks, I was able to do it for Disney. I was planning on drawing portraits there, uh, but they saw my work, they said I had a sharp eye. So, and it, they had just been a deficit of um, silhouette artists because 9 11 had happened a couple of years before that. So, they, they, I guess they assumed that um, since I was so good, I, I, you know, with my drawings, I'd be able to pick it up quicker than most people, which, which I did actually. I was able to skip about two, two, three weeks of the actual schooling there and go right to the cutting. I, I sat behind a couple of different artists for just two weeks. I basically tried to keep up with what they were doing. And then they said, okay, you're ready. And they just kind of, threw me out there Memorial Day weekend, and I learned by doing. So I, it was a busy summer, you know, it was, it was fun. And then I started freelancing at Downtown Disney, a uh, different company. So I got more commission, but I was able to come and go. And we actually started doing art shows every weekend almost. So we go, like, to different seafood festivals and, you know, go out to Savannah, Georgia a lot and stuff like that. And it was, it was real fun to be able to, um, you know, be in business for myself for the first time. I think it's something you can teach, but I think you have to have the right students. So I, w- I would say that, you know, if someone's artistic and they have the ability to, to first draw a likeness, you know, like the, the one book I recommend is Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. Um, I think it's very important to be able to, to have the subject right in front of you, eye level, with what you're seeing, and, and have your, your paper or your, your uh, canvas right up next to the subject. Because a lot of people, I think, would, um, left brain people tend to be more iconic and not be able to, to draw the actual um, lines, interpret them correctly. So I think you have to be somewhat of a right brain person and you know, be able to draw enough to know what anatomy is. And then once you could master anatomy and then you know, drawing it from the right side of the brain, I think you could then teach you know, the, the average person over a period of time and practice. Yeah, actually I've done a lot of weddings. I've done uh, birthday parties. We go to preschools and we're even doing like theme park weddings and um, you know, different pl- things like that uh, through different talent agencies. A couple took their grandson to get his silhouette drawn. You made the appointment yesterday? It wasn't their first time at Toy Chest. 
Many times, oh, okay. many, many times, and we'll be back many other times. Oh. Pretty much I could draw, um, you know, cut anything I wanted to. I don't get too intricate anymore because I find that if you get, if you put too many details in a silhouette, it actually takes away from it. And a lot of artists don't realize that less is sometimes more. Um, and being able to capture that actual outline shape, it defines everything right there. So that's more important than being able to put in the little cuts and nuances and things like that. Because you want, you want to, when you, in the end, your, your result should be, should, should be um, the subject. It shouldn't be something that's so amazing and so detailed that takes away from the subject. It should just outline the subject. They were pleased with the results. Yes, it's very, very cute. Very cute. We're happy with it. Locally owned and operated by the Joseph family, our store is completely remodeled and offers a variety of high quality products and exceptional value. You can find us at the corner of Kane and Prospect and experience our mission of having a positive impact on our associates, customers, and community.